Hey guys, Anders here. Welcome back to another video. Just got done watching the Super Bowl. Uh, Chiefs won easy, easy, easy. Eagles fans in absolute shambles. Will Philadelphia even be a city when I wake up in the morning? I doubt it. But that is completely beside the point and totally irrelevant to this video. In this video, we're going to talk about the very confusing nature of what is going on with the weapon designers slash balanced decisions that have been made over the past couple months in Battlefield 2042. And this has been spoken about before, but I really just have to hammer home just how crazy some of this stuff is. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, and of course subscribe to the channel. We're very, very close to 40,000 subs. Thank you guys so much for that. And I stream every single day at twitch.tv slash enders. Drop my channel a follow. First link in the description. So the wild and wacky world of Battlefield 2042 weapon decisions. Let's just start off with the most recent one that actually hasn't happened yet. The PP2000 buff. If you did not know, I made a video going over the recent update 3.2.1, which I believe will come out tomorrow, and in that update, they are essentially making the PP2000 from one of the worst guns in the game to potentially one of the best guns in the game. And keep in mind, the PP2000 is a submachine gun, and after this buff, it will beat most ARs in straight 1v1 combat within 50 meters. It will even beat the Scar in direct 1v1 combat if you do not hit a headshot, simply because it shoots 50 rounds a minute faster than the Scar does while dealing the same damage. This wouldn't necessarily be a problem if the damage range wasn't the same as ARs, but they made it the same as ARs, which is infinitely confusing because they simultaneously nerfed the SMG headshot multiplier a while ago to a near useless amount of 1.25. You might notice this while you're playing, but when you shoot someone in the head with a submachine gun, it's like you don't even really get a damage bonus. Meanwhile, you use an AR and you shoot someone in the head, and it's like they just got evaporated off the face of the earth. And you might be asking, Enders, why would they make such a decision? Like, why wouldn't they just make the damage range of the PP2000 less than the ARs so that they could increase the damage without having any problems? And I'm here to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, that I don't have the answer to that question. Now, moving on to a separate weapon design issue that is equally confusing, which is, of course, being reverted. It's the infamous ADS slash sprint to fire nerfs with drum magazines and extended magazines that literally not a single person asked for, but they did it anyway. Like, Alexander Formoso, who is a weapon designer at DICE, specifically stated in a Discord message that they weren't even sure this is the direction they wanted to take with this nerf, but they decided to go ahead with it anyway. And to make the situation even funnier, they're reverting the change almost immediately. Which, to their credit, good job, you know, you shouldn't have made the change in the first place, but... It's just baffling to me that they weren't sure about what to do, but they still did it. But it doesn't end there, because in the paragraph where they're talking about reverting these changes, they mention that they're still concerned about extended magazines and drum magazines providing too much uptime for submachine guns and ARs. But that begs the question, why don't they talk about light machine guns when they talk about combat uptime? Light machine guns are 200 round ARs. They have incredible combat uptime, and they really don't have many downsides whatsoever. So that begs the question, why are the weapon designers so concerned about an extra 10 to 15 bullets per magazine for submachine guns and ARs when you can have 200 bullets in a light machine gun? And I'll bring up this point that I have not seen anyone else bring up yet. This is a game with a 128 player game mode option. You are going to need more combat uptime with every weapon in the game. You doubled the player count. You doubled the amount of engagements that you could potentially get into in a single match, but the, the weapon designers are worried about 10 to 15 bullets. So maybe some of you can see why the title of this video is the way it is. I legitimately think some of the weapon designers are completely losing their minds. And a final example I'll bring up to this point, the railgun. The railgun still to this day completely invalidates all bolt-action snipers completely. 
the velocity is completely out of control. I understand it's a railgun, but this is a weapon that is in a game with projectile velocity. And in games with projectile velocity, you have to care about how fast you make the projectiles, or else it just makes it trivial. And that's what you see with the railgun. I will admit, PC players definitely have an advantage while using the railgun, but if you can learn that second delay that the railgun has, it's just a complete joke. Even if you body shot someone, you're dealing insane damage. And long range fights with the railgun are completely trivialized. You can just aim directly at someone, or maybe just ever so slightly above them, and you're going to hit them. It does not matter. Meanwhile, with bolt actions, I mean, hitting a running target from like 60 meters is hard sometimes with bolt actions. Like, I'm not really that great with bolt actions, and I, I think they feel pretty wonky in this game sometimes. With the railgun, it's as easy as, okay, if I'm aiming at you, I'm going to hit you if the weapon fires while I'm on target. And the only way to really make the bolt actions worth using over the railgun anymore is remove the railgun from the game. Because as long as the railgun exists in Battlefield 2042, I will just simply never use a bolt action rifle again because there is no point. And I could go on and on with many, many different weapon examples in Battlefield 2042 that just sort of illustrates that they don't seem to understand what is going on in their own game when they go to design and balance a new weapon. The BSVM, for example. The BSVM got nerfed, like, what, two or three times? And I would consider that gun to still be overpowered. Do you guys remember when it would headshot body shot out to 150 meters and it was more accurate? It was one of the most destructive weapons I've ever used in any Battlefield game ever. And it's still to this day, even after multiple nerfs, one of the best guns in the game. Which ju just goes to show how belligerently overpowered it was on release. All we can really hope for is in the next Battlefield game, we have some more competent weapon designers slash people that are balancing the game to avoid problems like this. So that the game makes more sense and is more fun as a result. I would love to hear you guys' opinions on this. Comment down below. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, and of course, subscribe to the channel. Turn notifications on. I stream every single day at twitch.tv slash enders. Join the Discord, follow your boy on Twitter, and uh, I will see you guys later. I honestly cannot wait to abuse the new PP2000. I think it is going to be hilarious. destroyed.